data from the Federal Inland Revenue Service shows a total of 1.2 trillion naira was collected as revenue in the first quarter of 2020. And the FIRS says that this translates to a 15 percent or 156 billion naira increase compared to the same period last year and is a first time achievement in its first quarter revenue collection history. Well, the tax office further explains that the historic final performance results for the period are quite remarkable as it coincides with a global fall in the price of crude oil price and, of course, the negative impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on the global economic system. But I'll be speaking with an associate director at Anderson Tax Nigeria, Michael Ango, to get a reaction to this report. Good morning, Michael. Tell us what Anderson's tax view of the first quarter report from the FIRS is a woman's 15% rise in revenue for the first three months of the year. Uh, good morning, and um, thank you for inviting me. I think the first thing we must do is to say that uh, we commend the FIRS for its um, transparency and openness. Um, it's a tradition that the FIRS has had for mm -hmm. uh, a while now. And, you know, so it's impressive that they've been open about what their collection is. Um, I think in terms of the actual collection figures, uh, 1.2 trillion for the first of the year is, is impressive, given that usually the first quarter of the year, of the year, as the first statement from the FIS itself alluded to, is usually slow. So there have been the Christmas festivities, um, budgets have been planned, and all of that. Businesses are trying to get them. So yes, uh, the first quarter is usually slow, and so 1.2 trillion collection is impressive, given the circumstances. Again, within the same quarter, we know that. Um, Crude oil prices fell uh, by almost 60 to 50 percent thereabouts. Um, so again, you know, it's impressive that this being within the constraints of what we know has happened in the last um, one to two months within our own local economy and probably three months for the global economy, they've been able to do this collection. Um, but if I may say further, uh, if you look at the collection, again, uh, then the some way to go. So FIRS is at a target of um, 8.5 trillion for the year, which is quite ambitious. So um, in that sense, 1.2 uh, trillion to 8.5 trillion is still a long history, and um, they must know what they need to do to, to cover the gap. But having said that, if we take the collection itself, um, in terms of what it represents for FIRS and for the economy, I think it's a good collection. Now, what would you think drove that increase? Could it be compliance rate or the rise in VAT? Well, I think a number of factors. In, um, at this time, it would be a bit too soon to judge what the real uh, um, you know, reasons for the jump in the collection are. But again, even the press uh, statement from the FIRA said there was an improvement in stamp VCs. I think there was an improvement in the capital gains tax. Uh, but again, we know that uh, there was a change in management at the FIRS. So sometimes, you know, you do get this uh, bump because when when a new management comes in place, especially for the FIRS uh, that hadn't had a board in about four years, and so they got a new board. So I'm sure a number of strategies and ideas and initiatives might have come into play. Um, but what I will also say is that uh, for the VAT, if you recall that the VAT came into play on the 1st of February, um, it is possible I don't have the figures, but it's possible that VAT could have contributed significantly. Uh, but what I would say is that if you if you strip the collection itself, you realize that um, one of the one of the major contributors to the collection was the rise in capital gains tax and the um, you know stamp uh, duty. So, like I said, let us wait um, and see what happens subsequently before we can really begin to say these are the reasons for you know the jump in collection. Well, the statement sent out to the media yesterday explains that there was an astronomical increase in collection trends, and of course, there was uh, there has been a usually low collection rate during the festive period of January, owing to the hangover of the New Year celebration. But just how do you think that they must have been able to record the success they have within that period? Okay, so like I said to you, there will be a number of. There will be a number of factors, internal and external. Um, the internal factors, like, the, like I said initially, include the fact that there has been a new management. Within the first um, you know, quarter of the year, I'm aware that the FRS um, engaged in stakeholder engagement. They traveled around to the 
to an Ogun and a few of the other species for significant, uh, you know, partial transactions. Um, and also that they set out some, some incentives to taxpayers. For example, within the first quarter of the year, the tax clearance certificates to taxpayers who needed them. Things like land that had been um, put on taxpayer accounts were leaked. I know that also the certain initiatives in terms of ICC filing platforms for VIP or online filing platforms for income taxes and all of that. So those are some of the internal factors that are to derive. For external factors, um, things like maybe the increase in the VIP from 5 to 7.5 to 10, you know, um, as much as we like to so, we must also realize that there's a lot of factors of transactions that happen in December. So some of these transactions will realize in, in, in December, February. So those might some of the right, for the job. Again, for the it might have been a one off, but it is tremendous. So I think that at the end of the day, what required from the FIS is sustained performance. All right, Associate Director at Anderson Tax, Michael Angle, thanks for sharing your thoughts with us on the program. Mm -hmm.